I'm Sterling Morris with Politica.com. Today we're in Annapolis, Mar Maryland with Congressional Candidate for District 3, Eric Knowles. How are you doing today, Eric? Doing very well, sir. Thank you for having me. Thanks for being with us. Absolutely. So, Eric, tell us a little bit about your campaign. How's it going? Well, it's going pretty well. Um, it's a difficult thing to do. We are. Um, I'm constantly on the move. As I had said earlier before we started the interview, that I'm in the third district, which is the second most gerrymandered district in the country. Um, so. Today, I actually drove um, probably about an hour and a half this morning to a, a meeting in Rockville, which is almost in, still inside my district, and then left from there and drove another hour and a half to uh, a point, another point in my district in Towson uh, in order to be able to go to two different interviews and different events this morning and then come back here to uh, Annapolis to do this. So it's, uh, it's very difficult to uh, constantly do all of this, but it's, it's definitely worth it. It feels good. Now, what differentiates you from your competitor? Well, I'm a strict constitutionalist, so I understand the, the limitations of government um, as, as uh, you know, told to us by the Constitution. Uh, there's an Article One, Section 8 that tells us what the Congress can do. The other thing that differs me from my opponent um, is the fact that I have the restraint to stay within that. Uh, it's very easy to believe that we have, that each of us as individuals have the, I, the idea that can, that can fix every problem out there, but the problem is that we can't. It's been proven time and again, and it, it's gotten us to the point where we are now as a society and as a nation, um, where we have had so many people over decades and a century or more have decided that they can, uh, they can fix every one of our problems, and they've come with all these different schemes and programs, and it's only kind of led us into the $16 trillion debt, you know, now because of the debt um, and because of the economic situation we have so much unemployment um, it, it's it's really more eroded the society than not where I believe in the, the the rights and the freedoms of the individual I believe that you know how to govern your life better than any person else on this planet knows how to and uh, that's what the Congress is supposed to do is supposed to allow you to be able to do that for yourself by keeping the government as small as possible um, and, and allowing you the maximum freedom now you've been on the road for many weeks now you've probably logged a lot of miles on your car and you've talked to a lot of uh, potential voters. What social issues are they really concerned about here in District 3? Well, there's a lot of social issues that people are, are concerned with, but like I said, um, the government actually has a very limited role in social issues. Uh, so there's a lot of things that we do decide upon um, at the federal level that are actually supposed to be reserved for the states. Uh, obviously, we have um, such things uh, in here in Maryland at a state level, such as the, um, the, the uh, traditional marriage um, that, that's on our, our referendum um, on our ballot this time around is, a, is one of the hugest issues that are going around. But, but that's not a federal, a federal um, you know, issue. That's really a state issue. Uh, I, I'm a Ninth and Tenth Amendment type of person, so there's only certain things that the federal government is supposed to do, and everything else is supposed to be reserved for the, uh, for the states. What fiscal issues are voters concerned with? Well, the economy, 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 and, and, of, and of course, in conjunction with that would be jobs. Um, you know, everyone understands when you show the number of zeros that there are in a $16 trillion debt and the fact that, you know, my daughter, um, who's 10 years old, may possibly have to pay that down because our generation is, is as much as we would even want to, couldn't possibly pay back $16 trillion debt in our, in our lifetime. So it's going to be incumbent upon other generations to do that. And this is an irresponsibility um, of our big government that we keep kicking the can down the road. So people understand that. But what I try to explain to them um, is the monetary policy. And this is actually even more impacting than the number of zeros. Because the fact that we can just create those number of zeros by a flick of a switch you know, with our Federal Reserve, which has taken the power away from another one of our congressional um, duties that we're supposed to have that we've kind of shrugged that off as a society and said someone else can do it and now they do it in secrecy um, is, is one of the things that I try to really explain to people so it makes no difference whether you're Republican or Democrat you spend money I spend money it's the same exact money regardless of your party affiliation and we need to work together in order to get it right uh, so that's that's the biggest fiscal issue issue excuse me that I try to get inv people involved with is getting their minds wrapped around the fact that it's not just about who has spent your money in the past but who creates your money and how that money gets into our society is even more dangerous than you know the, the $16 trillion debt that we have right now. So how can you as a congressman solve this problem? Well, like I said, we have to return to our con constitution. We need to, um, not only as myself, to only vote in favor of constitutional um, you know, ideas and issues, 
but to be able to encourage others and, and help others to get into Congress uh, and keep changing the narratives as we go. This is not a ship that can be turned around on a dime. It has to be done over long periods of time and generations where we get people to, uh, to understand these things. Education is always the key. And as a congressman, that gives my voice so much more amplification to where I can get to my constituents and I can tell them, you know, help them to understand monetary policy because, you know, prior to five years ago, you, you, I didn't have no idea where a Federal Reserve note came from. Now I understand that and understand the dangers of it, you know, our dollar bills and, and, and how that works. Having the, the pulpit of being the congressman allows me to be able to get in people's, uh, you know, lives and, and help them to understand these type of things and make the changes themselves because a congressman can't make this country absolutely right in one night but he can inspire people to get their votes out, to tell their neighbors, to change the other members of Congress so that we have more constitutional votes, and then we get it back to a constitution. And that, that's one of the Article One, Section 8 um, powers of the, of the Congress. Now, how are you using social media to communicate with your voters? Well, we use, we use Facebook a lot. Um, it's a, it's, I, in my opinion, it's like a short circuit on the political process that, we ha that we've had for so long in this country. Um, you know, it, you, you had old school media of um, pamphleteering, you had, um, you know, the bumper stickers and the lawn signs, and, and they go, they do well, but in a district like mine that is so gerrymandered, um, the, the fastest form of media, obviously, would be, would be social media. So I'm using Facebook, we have the like page up, and we do, um, you know, like bombs where we get people to, to tell all their friends about it, and, and we, we keep it enhancing our uh, presence on the, on the Facebook page. Um, I have my personal page. Most people, if you go on my like page, you're going to become a personal fan of mine, uh, uh, a friend of mine as well. And, uh, and of course, I talked with, um, with these people about um, all array of things and, and let them know who I am as, as a person. So instead of just getting to see my policies or interviews that I do like here and now, you know, I'm letting them into my life, my life and letting them know, you know, who I am as a person, you know, how I feel about everything ranging from, you know, the kind of food I like to my policies on, on things that will impact the lives of people, everyone across the nation. Now, where can voters go to learn more about you? We do also have a website. It's um, www.knowlesforcongress.com. Um, and uh, we keep all our events, you know, com connected with everything on the Facebook uh, to be able to, uh, you know, keep kind of connectivity going uh, in, in, in that manner. Uh, we also have, uh, there, you know, if you Google, thank God we have, uh, you know, a lot of other search engines out there that, that pick up everything that we put out, press releases. Um, so if you Google my name, Eric Knowles, it does come up pretty quickly uh, that I'm running for Congress and who I am. Uh, which is a surprising thing uh, when I tell my daughter to Google me and she sees my face pop up, you know, immediately. She, she just thinks I'm popular. I'm a rock star now in, inside the house. Well, thanks for meeting with us today, Eric. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. Absolutely.